or read in the media in the last week while we went through this mass hysteria of the communist pope espousing uh, basically Democrat socialist talking points. Please don't tell me he's a spiritual leader. I don't want to hear it anymore. And if you missed my show on Friday, as many people on WABC did, because the show was preempted for the coverage of the Pope, we're going to play a snippet of the show on Friday so I can cover that and get over it. Please do not call my call screener to complain about not hearing the show on Friday. Just clear the lines up and let us deal with it. I have something much more important right now. The cover of the Pope being here covered up Russia, China, and Iran unifying in Syria to get rid of ISIS because your president, in not getting rid of ISIS, was supporting ISIS. How do you like that? Let me make my main point. Don't assume Obama was not taking out ISIS because he didn't want to create a bigger war. He was doing it because I've told you this at least for at least six months. It was my analysis, and it was confirmed by several intelligence sources. Obama was letting ISIS rage because they were fundamentally his army to take down Assad. The sorority girls figured that they could let ISIS rage up to a certain point, take down Assad, which is something we want to do, right? And then in the, and at the end of the day, we'll take care of ISIS. A completely flawed strategy. So now China's moved in an aircraft carrier. Russia's moved in special forces. Uh, the Iranians have moved in uh, Republican Guard. Am I shocked by it? Government Zero. It's a prophetic book. I told you what's in it with regarding the Pope's hidden agenda last week. Chapter 3, Zero Strategy Against ISIS. Showing our hand, the America Obama loves. What's in a name? Undermining intelligence. A Hobson's choice. The enemies within. Where in the media? We are the new good Germans. Islam's thousand-year war on the West. Direct action for a nuclear Iran. Denying the global threat. And then, Chapter 4 is zero military. The purges continue. From soldiers to social workers. Supporting our enemies. Alienating our allies. Where is our warrior king? And the Vikings' fate. There is no other book like it. Government zero. But why? Why is Obama doing this? I'll tell you when I come back on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Afraid it has my attention because, you know, when I rank all the stories in the world every day uh, in radio, what do I really want to talk about? The number one thing to me, the number one issue politically, I really don't care about a lot of things. I care about national security more than anything else. We once were the world's number one superpower. This man has eviscerated the military because of his left-wing insanities. And at the same time he has eviscerated our military, and ask anyone in the military to see if I'm just using hyperbole. At the same time, at the same time that he's eviscerated our military, he has conducted himself in such a manner as to make the world much less safe. There is chaos in the Middle East as a result of this man's uh, flawed thinking, insane thinking, muted thinking. I don't even know how to put it. I've always thought, for a long time now, I figured out he's crazy. I think he is so crazy, with it, drunk on his own power because of the powerless John Boehner, who we own like a stooge, like a puppet. He realizes he has a one-party system, and as you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So we go back to the big story, in case you don't know what I'm talking about in the Savage Nation. While you were concerned about the fraud of global warming, while you were kissing the Pope's robes, even though a week before you spit on the church, because he was espousing the same line as any liberal college professor, he was like Bernie Sanders with a yarmulke, or Bernie Sanders with a cloak, put it to, to more, more accurately, or shall I say Bernie Sanders with a large cross, because it's the same damn message. Redistribute the wealth. Let everyone run into your country. Uh, the earth is crying because you're an evil man who's polluted the earth. I've heard it before from these college lunatics. That was your pope for a week now with that nonsense. And then a shuffling around like the great, the weight of the world is on his great back. So why is all of a sudden we wake up, waking up to the Chinese sending in an aircraft carrier to Syria and while he was wooing Obama and Obama was kowtowing and Michelle was wearing an ugly dress? That cost probably $50,000. All of a sudden, oh, we have such great friendship. Come to our dinner. They moved an aircraft carrier 
into the Syrian port of Tartus. They're setting up a joint command center with Russia and Iran in Syria, and they're going to destroy ISIS once and for all. Now, what are they going to do? What is the urgency of establishing a Russian, Syrian, Iranian military coordination cell in Baghdad? In Baghdad, no. Did you hear? Baghdad, Iraq. You've got Russian, Syrian, Iranian military coordination cell. Russian officers sighted in Baghdad. So what's going on? It's a war room. What the heck is going on? Fighters, attack helicopters, anti-submarine uh, uh, airplanes, air, anti-submarine helicopters. What is going on? Well, what is Russia doing there? Well, we know what Russia's doing there. They don't abandon their allies the way Obama does. Assad is their ally. It's in their sphere of influence. He's not falling. That's number one. But there's more to it. Are you ready for this? Debka Files counterterrorism sources point out that just as Russian Marines will be instructed to single out rebel militias with recruits from Chechnya and the Caucasus, the Chinese Marines, that's their special forces, will seek out and destroy Uyghur fighters from the northern predominantly Muslim Chinese province of Xinjiang. Did you hear what I just said to you? In the same way that Putin has no wish to see the Chechen fighters back in Russia, so too Chinese President Xi wants to prevent the Uyghurs from returning home from the Syrian battlefields. Now, how does that compare with, compare with Obama, who will not even revoke the passports of Americans who go to fight with these subhumans? Now we get to the, to the crux of my, of my monologue today. Because I saw the story and it all fell in place for me, as it has for months. I've been speculating, why is Obama not attacking ISIS? Why last week did the general, our general, U.S. general in charge of the uh, war against ISIS, he resigned. Did you know that? Oh, didn't make it to Jake Tapperhead's uh, brain? The number one general who was put in charge of de defeating ISIS resigned. You know why he resigned? Because they wouldn't let him conduct the war. He was a stooge. They made him into a stooge of the sorority that runs this world. Now the sorority is awakened up to the reality that Iran, China, and Russia are now an, uh, allied against ISIS. While they wanted ISIS to rage and take down Assad, the mystery question is why did they want ISIS to rage? Someone asked me this. They said, why? Well, I'll read you what I wrote because this is an internal email from me to someone very close to me who's smarter than me. Because he said to me, why is China going to war for the first time in this manner since the Vietnam War? Sending an aircraft carrier is a big deal. And I wrote this. Wag the dog. The anti-Israelis are correct. It's been Israel controlling the United States all along. They wanted ISIS to knock out Assad, thereby diminishing the power of Hezbollah. Now the reverse has happened. Hezbollah will be fighting alongside elite Russian special forces and Chinese spec ops and Iranian Revolutionary Guard troops. In the long run, this will be good for Israel because the above powers will constrain Iran and Hezbollah and another holocaust of World War II proportions will not occur. That's my email to someone in my inner circle. So the Israelis are not as smart as you think. You know, everyone thinks that the, the vaunted Mossad is so smart that they can outsmart everybody. Well, guess what? Maybe they can't outsmart everybody. Maybe Mossad is just made up of men and women who are very intelligent, but they have very limited capacities to see things as clearly as you may think that they see them, and they got outsmarted this time. Why hasn't Israel fired a shot against ISIS? Have you asked that question? And why has ISIS not attacked Israel? Have you asked that question? They're raging through Iraq. They're raging through Syria. They're killing, maim maiming, raping, murdering. But they haven't done anything to Israel. I wonder why. And why hasn't the most powerful military in the Middle East not joined Jordan and Egypt in, in, and, and Saudi Arabia, for that matter, in fighting against ISIS? Why is Israel not fired a shot again? Again, our great ally hasn't fired a shot. Every, we kept hearing, oh, Israel's in our corner. We need them to protect the Suez Canal. That's total rubbish. You're talking about 1950s, or, or 1950s antiquated worldview. Now, I support Israel only up to a point because I got to tell you something. I want you to evaluate what I'm about to say. I support America first. I support this country's a, a sovereignty first. It's the most important thing in the world. Because if America falls, there'll be no place to go. And so therefore, America must come first. We are in such danger because of the incompetent leadership or lack thereof that you can only imagine how bad things are. And as I said to you, this is a passion of mine, a great passion of mine. 
And now I want to turn it over to my listeners because I've given you about 35 to 40 minutes of the most important story out there. But before we do, we have to play the imposter in chief again. If you missed it, I said that uh, Teddy Roosevelt had a saying, talk softly and carry a big stick. Obama has reversed that to talk loudly and carry a broken stick. Listen to this man today attacking at the UN. Your loudmouth president attacks Russia in clip two. Consider Russia's annexation of Crimea and further aggression in eastern Ukraine. America has few economic interests in Ukraine. We recognize the deep and complex history between Russia and Ukraine. But we cannot stand by when the sovereignty and territorial integrity of a nation is flagrantly violated. Stop. You that- lying, you lying, lying thing, you. Our sovereignty and territorial integrity is being overrun by Mexicans, Guatemalans, Hondurans, and for that matter, Chinese. You're permitting it. You opened the door. You've destroyed our sovereignty and our territorial imperative. What, what nerve you have to get away with that big lie. What a liar. What a low-life demagogue this man is. He's concerned about the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine while he's broken our sovereignty and our territorial imperative. That's not why he wants to help Ukraine. That's not why at all. I covered that six months ago. I explained it in great detail in Government Zero. The only reason he wants to be in Ukraine is to move NATO troops right up to Russia's door. Because these the sick girls in the sorority, these psychotics in the sorority, are still fighting the Cold War. They don't even know what world they're living in, never mind what century or what decade. You can't pick up the speech from there, can you, Jim? It would be nice if you could, because I don't want to go back to the beginning. I mean, just where he stopped it, take the tape and run it forward. Can't be done. Consider I, we Russia's don't have the annexation of Crimea and further aggression in eastern Ukraine. America has few economic interests in Ukraine. Yeah. We recognize the deep and complex history between Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But we cannot stand by when the sovereignty and territorial integrity yeah. of a nation is flagrantly violated. Lie if that you. happens without consequence in Ukraine, it could happen to any nation gathered here today. You mean like That's our the nation? basis of the sanctions that the United States and our yeah, partners impose yeah, on Russia. Yeah, 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 you're so full of it. It sickens me. Cold War. Look what we put into the White House. Media may going. describe these events as an example of a resurgent Russia. And yet look at the results. The Ukrainian people okay, are more interested. Okay, stop right there. So here is a man who has upset the stability of the entire world, destroyed America's sovereignty, and now is trying to start a hot war with Russia. Do you understand finally what I've been trying to say to you, that there are consequences for incompetence? Do you get it? Do you finally understand that you can only justify a Pinocchio liar like this only so long? Okay, open it up now, Mike. 855-400-7282. KKOB Radio. Dave, fire away. 30 seconds or less. Your comment, please. Michael, you've been saying that this guy is an idiot. He's not. He's been following his social Islamic plan that he's ruining this country, bankrupting this country. All right, well, you're, you're giving me just homilies right now, standard right-wing homilies. You're not even hearing what I'm saying. I'm talking specifically about Syria. You're telling me that he had a, a grand strategy in Syria? How come it hasn't worked? Because he wants us to fail. He sent his prophet, this pope that's... I was a Catholic for 40 years. I'm 77. I haven't been a Catholic for the last 30 years, but the, he sent this false prophet. If you you say you read the Bible, that's all. I'm oh, hold on. Now we're going to get into Bible. I get it. Okay, I covered that for five days. I don't want to talk about this pope anymore. Thank God the bouncer went back to Rome. Let him continue with his double talk from Rome. I've had enough of him. I had enough of him, but you stay in the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Government Zero, which should be out any day now at least in hard copy. I don't know when it's going to be in the stores, October 27th, rather. I got another whole month, but you can buy it on Amazon. Uh, This Pope got me so agitated because he sounded like Bernie Sanders. There was no difference between the Pope's messaging and that of any left-wing professor at any tenured university, where he, he has no consequences to what he says. And the hypocrisy was overwhelming. It stank to high heaven. The Pope's hypocrisy stank to high heaven. How many refugees have they taken into the Vatican? telling us to break our borders to take in as many people as want to come here. But I, I don't want to turn this into a Pope show again. I did it to, to ad, ad nauseum. Good, goodbye, Pope. Goodbye, Pope. 
Go back where you came 